This lesson is about the standing waves and harmonic frequencies. Learning objectives. Explain the standing wave as a trapped wave in a fixed end median. Relate a standing wave with a guitar string. Demonstrate areas of interference between the incident and reflected waves of a standing wave. Derive harmonic frequency formula and identify nodes and antinodes. This is a guitar with strings fixed at both ends. A typical guitar has six strings. Each one has different thickness, which determine the pitch. The open hole located about one quarter of the string length works as a sound amplifier. When a guitar string is plucked, the string vibrates and creates sound. The length of the string determines its fundamental frequency of vibrations. Let me explain how this works. When a string is plucked on a random location, it vibrates and its waves travel through the string and reflect inverted from the fixed end. The incident and reflected waves produce interference along this string. When a string is plucked in the middle, it vibrates up and down. The string vibration produces half of a wavelength. This animation illustrates how the string of a guitar would move up and down. A complete wavelength will be two times the length of this string. This is half, that will be one complete wavelength, will be two times the length of this string. When a string is plucked at the blue arrow, in the location here at the blue arrow, the wave produced travels to the fixed end and reflects inverted. This picture indicates that one complete wavelength fits in this string. And this trace one is the reflected wave. This illustration shows one complete wavelength fitting that fits in this string. When a string is plucked at the blue arrow in this location, the wave produced travels to the end and reflects inverted. This picture indicates that one and a half wavelengths fit in this string. One and a half. And these come back inverted because both ends are fixed. This animation illustrates the formation of one and a half wavelength in this string. This is linky. When a string is plucked at the blue arrow, it travels to the fixed end and reflects inverted. The string vibration produces two complete wavelengths, one, two, and these come back, one, two. When a string is plucked at the blue arrow, the wave produced will travel to the end and will reflect inverted and this picture indicates that two and a half wavelength fits fit in this string. 
Now let's recap. Let's see the portion or number of wavelengths that fit in this string. For the case number one, where we plug in the middle, so we know that in this string we can fit half of a wavelength. So if I know the length of this string, I can determine the wavelength because the wavelength will be two times the length of this string. Case two, the length of this string will fit one complete wavelength. So the wavelength will be the size of the string. On case three, one complete wavelength plus half will fit in this string. So one plus half is three and a half. Um, to find the wavelength in terms of the length will be two thirds of this length. So if I know the, the length of this string, I can calculate the wavelength. For number four, the length of this string will fit two wavelengths, one, two. So the wavelength is equal to half of this length. For number five, the length of this string will fit one, two and a half wavelength. So two plus half is five and a half. So the wavelength is two fifth of the length. So this is, summary, this is the summary of the five cases uh, for different locations at which I pluck the string. Now we are going to rearrange um, this equation in terms of the wavelength in function of the string length and the speed of a wave formula to derive a formula for the string frequencies. So here is the speed of a wave wavelength times frequency. So the wavelength for each case is given here. So what we are going to do is we are going to replace the value of the wavelength times the frequency. So 2L times F, 1L, 2 thirds of L, half of L, and 2 fifths of L. Our third column, now we are going to um, find the frequency in terms of velocity of the wave and the length of the string. So F is equal to V over 2L. F is equal to V over L. F is equal V, actually 3V over 2L. F is 2V over L and F is 5V over 2L. Our next, next column, we are going, I see a pattern and I want to isolate this, this repetition to find a, my general formula. So I can see here V over 2L, here I have V over L, but if I place a 2 here, I will have V over 2L. Here I have V over 2L. Here I have V over L, but if I place 2 here, I will have V over 2L. And here I have V over 2L. So to make this arrangement, this modification, that's what we are going to do. So we are going to write this number 1 because you will not alterate this formula. So it will be 1 times V over 2L. The second one, I'm going to add 2 here. If I do, I add 2 here, so I will not modify the formula. So it will be F equal 2V over 2L. On the 3, I just isolate 3, and I, I have my V over 2L here. My 4, this is 2. So I will have a 4 over 2 because 
4 over 2 is 2, so I'm not changing the formula. And I have the, not, the values that I want to isolate because they are identical. If for 5, I don't have to do anything. I just isolate V over 2L. Great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this number 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And I'll have V over 2L, V over 2L, V over 2L, V over 2L, V over 2L. Okay, so I'm going to keep it the first one. And I will say that the, my first frequency, my first frequency is equal to 1 times V over 2L. My second frequency, you see that V over 2L is right here. So my second frequency will be 2 times this frequency. My third frequency will be 3 times my first frequency. My fourth frequency will be 4 times my first frequency. And the last one, my fifth frequency, will be 5 times my first frequency because everything here is equal to V over 2L. So, these will be my first one will be my first or fundamental frequency because all our second, third, fourth, and fifth frequency is a multiple of my first frequency. So my first frequency is the most important, important frequency of, of my set. Um, other frequency, the other frequencies, they will be a function of my first one. Okay, now let's determine one more important um, feature of stand waves. It's called node and anti-node. Because a stand wave is a trap wave between two fixed ends. So we have the incident wave traveling to the right. We have the reflected wave traveling to the left. So they interact in the mirror so we have areas of constructive and destructive interference. So our constructive interference will be the maximum displacement that we call anti-node. And our destructive interference will be our node. So node or N, there is no motion there. So it's very easy to identify the node where no motion occurs. An anti-node will be the area of the maximum displacement. Just like amplitude, but now we have the amplitude here is double. Now let's identify the node and anti-node for our guitar string for our five frequencies. So our first one, we have one node here one node here and one anti-node here. So it will be two nodes, one anti-node, and that is the fundamental frequency. For our number two, we have one node here, one node here, and another one there, and we have two anti-nodes. So we have three nodes and two anti-nodes, and my second frequency is two times the fundamental frequency. This is my second harmonic. My third one is one, two, three, four. Four nodes, one, two, three, anti-nodes. And that is the formula. F3 is equal to three F1. So uh, my fourth frequency is one, two, three, four, five anti-nodes. One, two, three, four, I mean, five nodes and four anti-nodes. And that's the formula for our frequency. My last one, we have one, two, three, four, five, six nodes, one, two, three, four, five anti-nodes. And this is our frequency. Let's look at pattern. So as you see, we have here two anti-nodes, and this number is also 2. 
So my second frequency can be determined by the number of antinodes times the fundamental frequency. My third frequency is equal to 3, which is the number of antinodes times the fundamental frequency. Because all frequencies of standing waves, they are multiple of a fundamental frequency, which is the first one. And for number four, for actually for my fourth frequency is F4, the fourth frequency is equal to the antinode, which is four times the fundamental frequency. So the we can calculate the all the, the, the harmonic frequencies based on the number of the antinodes and the fundamental frequency. It's pretty easy. Fifth uh, will be five antinodes, which will be five times the fundamental frequency. In conclusion, standing waves are traveling waves trapped between two fixed and boundaries. Right here. The incident wave and the reflected wave interact with each other, creating sections of constructive interference, antinodes, where the vertical displacement is the highest, called antinode, in the areas of destructive interference, called nodes. Standing waves have specific frequencies, multiples of the fundamental or first frequency. The frequency of n harmonic can be determined by the number of antinodes of its standing wave. So that's all that we need to know about standing waves.